So let's talk about some of the uh, principles of a Redux application. Uh, the first thing, and perhaps the most, uh, I would consider it the most important, is the fact that uh, it says there's a single source of truth. So the state of the entire application uh, is stored in one place. And what we're looking at here is, this is an example of what the state of an application might look like. So here it says that, uh, think of this as just like state as we would have in a, in a component. Uh, this is like a, a to-do app. So this state has a list of to-dos, and those to-dos have uh, some text on them, they keep track of whether they're completed or not, and it looks like this application also has a, uh, a visibility filter. So you can probably toggle this application to say, show me all the tasks I've completed, show me the tasks I need to do, or in this case, the, the visibility filter says, show me everything, whether it's done or not. So um, when Redux comes in, it says that your application should have a single source of truth. Uh, that means that it's trying to store all of the application data, the state of the application, in one place. So uh, as we've built different components, uh, we have put the state in various components. Uh, yes, we've strived to bring them up uh, towards the top of our application, uh, but we're going to see that uh, the way Redux does things is it really wants us to, to put it all inside one thing, which is called a store. They say it's a single store. Um, the other thing about this state is it's read-only. So the only way to change this state is to... Uh, what's called emitting an action. So what this means is if I, uh, well see, look here. Um, this is showing two different examples of actions. So the way that we interact with the state is we define certain actions that we can perform on it. And those actions, what they do is they describe how to manipulate the state. So here, um, when we're saying emit, or when we're saying to dispatch an action, uh, what we do is we give it uh, the action a type, and we give it some additional information. So here, if we dispatched a complete to-do action to the store, uh, this is saying we're completing a to-do, and it's at index one. Uh, so remember, the store is where we store all of our app data. And if I scroll back up, we can look at uh, what that store looks like. I'm trying to keep these all on the same page. And here we go. So here's our store. And our store has a list of to-dos. And if we dispatch an action which says complete to-do, uh, we should change this. Uh, so this one should say false. Uh, but remember, the whole point of this is the state is read-only. So, uh, when we dispatch an action to the store, uh, it doesn't modify the store here. What it does instead is the store actually creates a new copy. Uh, it creates a new copy of the state, and it uses that new copy of the state as the new state for the application. So when it says that the state is read-only, and that there's a single source of truth, uh, what that means is that when this, uh, what, what happens to the store is the store basically copies all of its information and then it modifies the copy. Uh, the idea here is that uh, if you never actually manipulate the information itself, if you keep your state as read only, uh, it makes it harder for your application to get into a state where you don't understand what it's doing. Uh, sometimes when you build applications and if you have mutable state, um, things can basically get into um, situations that you didn't expect, things that you didn't predict. Uh, and uh, by creating a single store and by interacting with that store with just a, a small set of, of predefined actions, and by having those actions uh, never overwrite anything, 
Rather, by having those actions uh, copy the store and create uh, and then modify the copy, uh, it, it just means that uh, it makes it a little bit easier to, to write uh, these applications. Uh, the final uh, principle here is that the changes should be made with pure functions. And all that a pure function means is it's a function without a side effect. Um, so uh, when, we, when we mean a side effect, that means that uh, if I am running um, a function, it should produce uh, an answer and, and, and it, it, uh, an easy way to think about it is if you give a function the same input, it should give you the same output. Uh, a pure function could become, or, or, or a non pure function can become contaminated. Uh, what I mean by that is let me make a function here. I'm going to call it add. I'm going to give it two numbers. I'm going to return x plus y. Here, I'm going to I'm going to call this one pure add rather. So here is a function which could which could be considered a pure function. Um, a pure function simply has no side effects. So here, if I give it 88 and 10, it's going to return 98, and it's going to do that every single time because this function has no side effects. Uh, now let me show you a, a, a silly example. Um, I'm going to call this function. In fact, let, let me only make a variable here. I'm going to say let contamination equal one. And now I'm going to say that we have a function called unpure add, which takes x and y. And the contamination is going to go up, and it's going to return x plus y plus contamination. So what this thing means is if we have an unpure add and we try and add 88 and 10, well, it gave us 100, uh, but it had a side effect of running the function actually manipulated this contamination variable. So if I run that again, notice that I gave it the same parameters, uh, but it gave me a different result. And again, every time I run this, it's going to give me a different result. Uh, now this is a, a, a contrived example, but this is the essence of what uh, a pure function means. A pure function means that it, it does not uh, contaminate anything outside of itself. And if you give it the same input, it's always going to give you the same output. Um, now, if we think about that, what that means for the uh, Redux, um, well, now what we have is we have a store. So we store our information, and we say that we interact with that through actions. And the actions will produce new data, but uh, they, they don't ever write over the data. Rather, they take the old data, they make a copy of it, and they produce new data. So state is read-only. Well, uh, now you might be able to see why the pure function is important. Um, we need a pure function, which is something that does not uh, have a side effect. We need a function that, uh, when we run it, it should do the same thing every time, and it should not depend on any sort of global data. Uh, notice that's how this one became contaminated is uh, a telltale sign of an unpure function is, is a function which uh, interacts with something outside of its scope for one, and number two, uh, if it ever mutates uh, something outside of its own scope, uh, you're bound to have an unpure function. So let's see uh, what this looks like. Uh, so what, what uh, how Redux ties these, these two things together it ties together the store and the action with something called a reducer. So remember that a store 
is simply the data of our application, the state of all of our application. And then we send it, we can send an action to the store and it interacts with it via a reducer. So those are three big keywords for Redux. In fact, I'm gonna take the time just to write them, door, write them down. You have the store, the place where state is stored. In fact, I'm gonna say the one place. You have an action, describes how to produce a new store. And now you have a reducer. And a reducer is a pure function that produces a new store according to a action. So these are actually three vocab words for you, a store, an action, and a reducer. So let's scroll down here. Uh, so this is actually what a, produce, uh, a reducer looks like. Um, in this case, there's actually two different reducers. Um, one of them, uh, notice all they are is, is functions that uh, you give them an action and they see what the type of the action is and you modify a given state according to uh, what the action said. So in this case, it says we switch on the action type. If someone is setting a visibility filter, then we're going to return uh, the filter that was set on this action. Uh, over here, here is the uh, a to do reducer. Uh, it takes in the state and it looks at the action. So if the type of the action says that we're going to add a to-do, then what it's going to do is it's going to take the original state and uh, this syntax means it's going to unpack it. So the original state was an array um, and it's going to copy the original state and then add a new to-do item here. So this is saying if someone adds a to-do item, it's gonna take the original state, make a copy of it, and then add a new one here. And notice that it starts as completed false, and the text of it comes in through this action object as well. So the action object always has a type because you wanna say what the action actually is, and then the action can have other information as well. So let's go up and, and look at this uh, because we saw a dispatch example before. So here, oh, well, they don't have an add example. Um, but here you can see that we are dispatching an action of type complete to do, and it has an index of one. So we run a dispatch function. And here, uh, in the to do's actually, uh, we look at the type of the action, and if the type of the action was complete to do, then we take the state, and in this case, we are mapping each one of those. And if the index matches, uh, we are updating the object to say, uh, yes, that's completed now. So um, that, that really is the essence of Redux. Um, remember, you have three pieces. You have a store, an action, and a reducer. Uh, the store stores the action. An action defines how uh, you can manipulate the data without overriding it. And the reducer is just really a big function that has an if statement that uh, switches over the type of the action and gives you a new copy of the store data. So uh, in essence, all that uh, a Redux does is has a store and uh, all these different types of actions and a reducer is you define every action that you can do for a store which has state and you just return new state.